All right, everybody, better late than never, I always say. So we're finally gonna be discussing the Hellraiser Quartet of Torment box set from Arrow. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, I'm Chris. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Today on the channel, we're going to be discussing the Arrow box set, Hellraiser, the Quartet of Torment, which houses the first four films on 4K. I know I'm probably the last person to discuss this box set. I wanted to take my time. I've also been very busy, but I kind of wanted to throw my hat in the ring and discuss what I like and don't like about all of this. Also with the news that Arrow is now going to be releasing a very stripped down version of this, not this deluxe version, but a stripped down version with new artwork and the first four films in 4k so you're getting the same films just obviously not the book and the deluxe packaging here but it is a little cheaper than that at 49.99 so i'll put a picture of that on the screen so you can see the new artwork and the new packaging versus obviously this deluxe set which is sold out and is selling for upwards of 200 on ebay which is a little ridiculous if you just want the movies i would just do the new set for 50 bucks and kind of put them in your collection i'm not necessarily a huge fan of the artwork it's very purpley i like purple but I, I don't know, I'm just not a fan of it. I like this one, obviously. The reds and the blues, I like that a little bit better. It's aesthetically pleasing. So let's get into this, and then we'll talk about the films. And then we'll talk about some stuff that I actually like about the films, a little trivia and stuff like that. And then if this is worth a purchase at $200, or if you should just stick with that $50 one, obviously on your budget, I would stick to that one. But this still may be worth it for some collectors if they can find it at a decent price. So let's get into this. Here is the front. Of that, there's the back. Let's pull this out. So you get this kind of really cool where it's cut out, so you get to see kind of the flesh in this through this plastic covering. So there's that. This comes off, it's just a slip cover. And then we have this inner part back in front. This folds out, and this is gonna house your four discs. So we've got Hellraiser, Hellraiser 2, Hellbound, then we've got Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth, and then Hellraiser 4. Bloodline. All right, so let's get into this book, which I think this is actually super cool. It actually reminds me, coloring, which is weird, of that very original IMAX Batman vs. Superman poster. I know that has nothing to do with this, but the coloring and how it's kind of stripped down and worn. I'll put that up here so you can see it. That's what it reminds me of. But anyway, this is a very cool book. It's got a lot of like behind the scenes stuff, a lot of photos, all that kind of stuff. So definitely a cool thing if you're really into Hellraiser. All right, so. Let's talk about the video and the audio quality for all of these movies before we get into some stuff that I want to talk about with each individual film. So these are new 4K scans of the camera negative, which is great. They're finished off in Dolby Vision, which I obviously prefer. You might know that if you've been on the channel a while. And then we get lossless audio tracks, and then we also get a DTS HD 5.1 master audio with these as well, which sounds pretty decent, but I don't want to get into that yet. So they're also special feature wise, before we get into anything else, there are new audio commentaries on all of these. They've got various different people on all of those. Also, there is an unrated version of the third film, Hell on Earth. Just know that it's gonna have some standard definition stuff kind of shoved into it as it was not restored in this version. So it's kind of your special feature stuff. There's a ton to dive into. So if you're really into Hellraiser or any of these films, there's a ton of special features, not just physically, but also digitally on these discs. Let's get into the first film itself, directed by Clive Barker. I know this is a favorite of very many people so I really like the first Hellraiser film. It's not my favorite but I really do like it and re-watching it it looks fantastic. I would say it's about a four and a half out of five. I think it looks very good. I think the grain is intact. I think the Dolby Vision does a lot to kind of highlight those blacks and the colors even though this is not a very like saturated movie. It's a very kind of plain movie as they're mostly in the house and kind of the Cenobites are very black. It does look good overall. Now Going into the second film, which is my personal favorite, <laughs> Hellbound, I just like that we kind of get out of the constraints of the house. We get to go to hell. We get to follow these characters even more, and I like the second one a lot. Again, directed by Clive Barker. As we get into this third film, which is not that great, Hell on Earth, I think it's still decent and not my least favorite, obviously, even out of these four. I really like that movie. It's directed by Kevin Wilcox. And then finally, with Hellraiser 4 Bloodline, we get the great 
Kevin Yeager directing and Joe Chappelle on here. Kevin Yeager, if you don't know who he is, was most notably known for like his visual effects artwork and he did Freddy Krueger and he also did my personal favorite, The Crypt Keeper Creature. So I love that show, Tales from the Crypt, is most notable for getting me into horror when I was a child because my mother let me watch that far too young. That was my Saturday evenings and sometimes Friday nights was kind of Unsolved Mysteries and then dovetailing into some X-Files and Tales from the Crypt. I, you know, I got corrupted and that's why nothing is really scary for me now. But anyway, that's kind of, a, in a nutshell, the packaging the audio, the video. So the second movie, I would say four and a half as well for that video. It looks pretty much the same as the first movie. The third movie, I think, looks notably worse. It still looks good, but I would say the next two are probably fours out of fives. They're not terrible, but they don't look as good as those Clive-directed movies because he just had an eye for them, and the third and fourth ones are very just different than those, especially the fourth and Bloodline, which kind of has some adjacent X vibes where it's just kind of in space. It's got a lot of bad CG in it because it's 1996. Also, most notably, this is the last movie that came out theatrically and also the last one that Clive Barker was ever like involved in from a creative standpoint. So kind of the dead end of this franchise as it went into obscurity and most of those other movies were just scripts that were like Detective X movie turned into Hellraiser so we could keep the rights for it until obviously the new Hellraiser that came out on Hulu. God, has it been two years now? Yeah, it's been two years now. I kind of... Well, I reviewed that on the channel, I think, as a very early review, so don't check that out. It's probably not a good review, but I did like that movie. I think it's decent. I'm curious to see if we get anything after that. I mean, it was fine. Obviously, nowhere near the first two Hellraisers, but it was a decent film overall. So, again, getting into the audio where we got the Lostest Track and then the 5.1 Master Audio, I think it sounds really good, especially, again, those first two movies. I think they sound very good. Their sound mix are very well done. The other two do sound uh, good as well, but I, I don't know. The fourth one, for me, just had some weird stuff in it. I really don't know where to like pinpoint it. I don't know if it's just like the mixing of the music and the sound and the dialogue and something like that. And it may not bother you, but something about it just kind of was off to me and I can't really pinpoint again what it is. I may need to re-watch it to kind of see like, oh, it's this thing or this X thing that is bothering me. But I don't know, it's just something about the soundscape kind of irritated me. And like, again, I, it's not bad, just something about it irritated me and I don't know what it is. So I'm going to have to explore that at a later date. And if I find out what it is, I will comment it down below, even if it's three months from now. <laughs> anyway, so that's all of that. So that's kind of our packaging. That's our video and our audio quality. That's the four films and my personal favorite. Let me know down below what your personal favorite Hellraiser film is because it may be the first one, maybe the second one, maybe the fourth one, maybe the ninth one. I don't know. You know, that weird, you know, pinhead when it wasn't Doug Bradley anymore. I don't even want to talk about him. Anyway, it gets very dark and bad in this scenario. Overall, I think this is a solid set. I think it's an amazing set. It's got a lot of physical stuff that's very cool and also a lot of digital stuff that's very cool in these special features and the new audio commentaries on all four movies. So that's all I've got. Thanks for stopping by. This is an amazing set. I'm glad that I finally kind of got to talk about it. I know it's been a while. I'm going to be ramping up videos again. Look forward to the thinner Blu-ray review coming next week from Scream Factory. I'm excited. I really like that Stephen King adaptation, so it's getting its first foray into Blu-ray. I also am looking to cover the Black Room and Fatal Games on their Blu-ray releases from Vinegar Syndrome. So we've got a lot to cover and a lot going into the end of January and February with some new releases from all the boutiques and all the big label companies. All right. Thanks for stopping by and I'll talk to you guys in my next 4K review. I'm going to make some videos for you at the end as always and I'll talk to you guys later.